Hi everyone, it's Miriam with Easily Essential and we're here to talk about how to use essential oils on your horses in your barn and really support your horse's total wellness with essential oils. Um, I know everyone wants to know how to do things more naturally, so this is meant to give you a starting place for that. Uh, first of all, what are essential oils? What do they do? So essential oils are the life force of a plant. So kind of like our blood is to us, they are to the plant. So they regu help regulate the plant's circulation. They help the plant heal when it gets cut, just like our blood helps oxygenate us. So what's really awesome about plants is that, you know, we all know that when we eat more fr fruit and veggies that we all feel better. And um, we need plants and they actually need us to live. So just like those plants are doing all those amazing things for themselves, they can actually do a lot of that for us too and our horses. So um, some of the ways that are really common to use essential oils is aromatically and topically. Um, and you know what a really awesome way that I found um, incorporating in my whole horse's routine is internally. And when you use an oil internally, that you wanna make sure that you use an oil that's approved for internal consumption. That's the major thing with that. But there are so many amazing benefits to using the oils all three ways. So today we're gonna to talk about all three methods of use. So, uh, sorry, <laughs> I have some note cards here. Um, before we start, um, I think we should just go over how they're used. So first of all, topically. Topically is, you know, on your horse's back, on their stifles, their joints, their muscles, on their pole, topical use on your horse. Um, I always start out by diluting an oil by 50% with a carrier oil. A carrier oil is just another um, oil like olive oil that you use in your kitchen or grapeseed oil or coconut oil is a great carrier oil and almond oil. So I always dilute it with a carrier oil to begin with just to make sure oils are super, super powerful and you'll really only need a little bit. A little goes a really long way, okay? So um, I really like topical use. Aromatic use for horses is also super beneficial, especially when it comes to um, calming oils and focus and also um, breathing. So some of the ways that I really like to use oils aromatically with my horses is I just put a drop in the palm of my hands and rub them together and let my horse sniff out of my hands, just like this, cut your hands together and let your horse sniff. Another way I like to use them aromatically is I, um, especially for breathing, I'll put a diffuser in my horse's stall and just let them breathe those oils in. Um, another way you can use them just at the barn is for, you know, all those like buzzing buggers that are going on in the summer that are driving us all nuts. If you put a diffuser in the barn and just have some great oils going, it can help keep your barn really annoyance free. Okay, so that's, uh, we did topical, aromatic, and then what we talked about, touched on a little bit before, is internally. So um, when using oils internally, always make sure that you use an oil that's approved to be using internally. A lot of the oils you'll find say, they even say not for topical use. That's because they're not really pure oils. They're, they're basically a bunch of garbage. Um, sorry. And um, so when using internal oils on my horse, some ways that I like to do it is I will get a metal water bucket and just add the oils to the water bucket and let my horse have free choice to them. So um, we'll go over this, but peppermint is a really great one to do that with and lemon is a great one to do that with. The reason I get a metal water bucket for that is because oils are so powerful that they can actually break down the plastic in water buckets. So I don't want my horse drinking plastic. And um, that's why I do the metal. And um, always make sure that you have fresh water for each choice as well for your horse so that you're not just forcing them to drink the oil, the essential oil water. Okay, so that's one way. Another way is just adding it to your horse's feed. Um, my horse gets hay pellets and um, some other really good stuff. But what I do to get the oils into his feed is when I'm doing his 
supplements and all of his feet. I do the hay pellets on top last. Then I drop the oils on that because we all know oil and water doesn't mix super well. It can kind of sit flat on top of the water. So I put it on the hay pellets so that it, when I add the water to the mix, because I always add water to my horse's feed, you don't have to, you could just do it like that. Um, it kind of constitutes all through the grain and the feed. So that's another way internally to give your horses the oils is just right into their feed. Um, another way is in a syringe. So you can either put water with the essential oils in a syringe, or you can put a carrier oil like olive oil or coconut oil in there. Um, coconut oil, there's certain kinds that, um, I think it's MCT oil, it is a little bit more liquidy, so it's easier to get through the syringe. The harder coconut oil that you get at the store is a little harder to get through the syringe. Olive oil is a lot easier than that. Um, so that's another way to use them internally on your horse. Um, also, when I go through topically, some of the places that I love to use oils are on my horse's pole, um, on their chest, um, on their neck, on their spine, all down their spine, their cornet band, their feet all the joints um, between the legs. I don't, a lot of people talk about using oils. They're like, oh, I just put this oil in his nose. And you know, horses are so sensitive. They really don't need that sensory overload. I actually don't want to give them that sensory overload. I want to put it somewhere else that where it's going to absorb into my horse's whole entire body. It's going to affect every cell in their body. You don't need it right in the nose. Okay, so, um, that goes over, I guess, how to use them with the horses. Um, today, we're gonna be talking about supporting your horse's whole system with 11 different oils. And why 11? These oils, if you get one or two oils, I think that's awesome because any essential oils is better than none, right? But if you got one or two and then you called me and said, you know, my horse is having this issue. I don't know what to do. This is new. This just came up. Oh, I'm worried about this. And, and these are the oils I have and you only have two. Chances are I'm not going to be able to help you. But if you have these 11 oils in your barn, they're going to be like this, a big giant Swiss army knife. <laughs> like they're going to cover so many different things. And that's why they're bundled together in this um, class. Okay. So, um, the first uh, oil, I guess, we'll talk about is lavender. And a really interesting fact about lavender and about the quality of the oils, because quality is so, so important. Um, when I first started using essential oils, I actually started in my home, and I didn't really notice any difference. I was buying oils at the you know health food store, and I didn't notice much difference. I just thought that they were mostly for fragrance. And I didn't realize I was buying fragrance oils. They weren't really true essential oils. They were just marketed really well to trick me into believing that. So a lot of oils will say like therapeutic grade or pure or all natural, 100% pure. And all that means is that a little bit of something in that oil is 100% pure. It still can have a bunch of gunk in it. So be sure wherever you get your oils that you're getting it from someplace, you know, that tests their dirt for pesticides, that has great quality control, that controls their own harvest and the, and the seeds and ensures everything is GMO and pesticide free and doesn't, doesn't distill their, their oils with shortcuts that controls their own distillation. Um, there's a lot of shortcuts that can be done even with pure essential oils that really um, downgrade the quality of them and the effectiveness and you end up buying a lot of oil that doesn't work that well. So those are my words of the wise. So another thing is, so 90% of all the lavender on the market is synthetically modified. So if you think like, oh, I don't like lavender smell or I do like lavender smell, chances are you've actually never smelled pure lavender, right? 90% chance. And there, most lavender, it comes from France, right? There is a hundred times more lavender marketed and, and sold and exported from France than, it, than is actually grown there. So this much is grown there, but all of this says that they're like 100% pure from France, right? But only this much is, okay? So that's uh, like a little fact. Um, companies are really good at great marketing and great language and just tricking us, I guess. Um, so 
Um, with essential oils, obviously quality is everything, especially if you're going to be feeding these to your horses and using them internally, even on yourselves, you want those pure oils. Um, so, oh, back to lavender. So sorry. Lavender. Okay. So lavender right here is, it is the Swiss army knife of essential oils because it has so many different uses. A lot of people think it's just for sleeping, but it's actually great for mental clarity and relaxation and focus and it's awesome on skin. So for my horse, um, I love lavender for any kind of situation where they're under stress or they need a little calming. Um, I also love it for skin. If you have a horse with um, sensitive skin, itchy skin, maybe you rubbed out patches of skin or any kind of funk on their skin, this oil is one of my first success stories with a really itchy mare that was like, I owned her her whole life and she just raw in a lot of places. And I started using lavender with a few different oils and it was a huge game changer for her. So itchy skin, mane and tail, this is a great oil. Um, even in a body wash, uh, horses really respond to it. Like I said, most people know about lavender for calming of horses, but they don't know about all the other uses. And this, and also even in your summertime horse spray with those annoyances buzzing all around, lavender is a great one. Um, Okay, so the next oil is peppermint. And another one in the summertime horse spray, peppermint is a great one. Um, the, my most common way to use peppermint is for digestion. And I love this oil for two things, digestion, and right now that it's summer and it's like over 90 degrees here, cooling. It's a very, very cooling um, summer heat oil. So this is one that I would put in that metal water bucket. Make sure the metal water bucket's not sitting in the sun so the water doesn't get hot in there. Um, I even sometimes put some, um, make sure it's in the shade and I'll change the water out throughout the day. But this is a great one for cooling. You can do it internally because it's a vitality oil. So our vitality oils, are they have a different label. So you see how this is solid and this is white around it? Um, lavender comes in vitality too. The only difference is the label because of the FDA. And it's actually the same oil, but not all oils come in a vitality um, vitality version because not all should be consumed. So it's always best to stay with the vitality line because you know you're getting something that's safe and, um, and will really benefit your horse. So the peppermint vitality, um, you can put it in your horse's water bucket. Not only will it help for the summer heat, but it is an amazing oil for digestion. Amazing for digestion, healthy elimination of your horse. We all know horses have the most sensitive digestive tracts that I can think of. I'm sure there's something else with a more sensitive one, but gosh, they'll go off their feed, they'll go off their water. You have to, you know, worry a lot of stress and worry goes into horses' digestion um, on their part and on our part. So peppermint is an oil that I always want to have on hand because it really helps calm things down. Um, another great use is muscles. So like I said, it's cooling internally, but it's also really great after a hard, sweaty workout to, um, I'll, I'll make a body wash with Epsom salt in a bucket and some peppermint and maybe a few other oils, but even if you just do peppermint, it's gonna cool your horse right off. I'll start at the brainstem and go all the way back, the brain, the pole, and go all the way back and just really cool them off after that workout and give them that, that bring their body temperature down. Um, another thing that I really like to use it for is their muscles. It's great for their muscles. So I'll put this, I'll rub it on their joints and on their muscles, especially if they've got some tired muscles. Peppermint is great for muscle support. Um, another great oil um, that is Pretty, I don't know if it's pretty well known or not for muscle support. This is Copaiba. Copaiba, this is the vitality, but you can use it topically too. And Copaiba is m probably most commonly known as a magnifier. So if you layer it with other oils, it magnifies the properties of those other oils. But some other great properties that Copaiba has is that it's great for digestion. So we were just talked about the horse's digestive tract. Copaiba is great for their digestion. It's great for stress muscles. And then probably the least common, least known way that 
the horses can benefit from Copaiba is for focus and calm. Again, you can just put a drop right on their pole, um, on their chest, you know, rub it in. Um, with horses, you can you can dilute essential oils. I always start by diluting them, but like Copaiba, I'll just put it directly on my horse. I'll put it in my hand and then rub it on them. And it's great for focus and calm. So that's a great one for skin support, focus and calm, digestion. Oh, I forgot skin support. So this goes in with the lavender for those sensitive horses. Um, okay, another oil that I absolutely love that I'm actually using on myself a lot right now is Panaway. And Panaway is a blend of four different oils. So it's already pre-blended for you. You don't have to make all these blends. And it's great for achy joints, muscles, discomfort, your horse's spine, shoulders, hocks. It, it, it's just think of the name Panaway and just think comfort, I guess. Comfort for anything that's stressed and not feeling 100% on your horse. Um, I actually use this before and after hard rides. It's great to layer with the copaiba and the peppermint. That's my favorite way to layer it. Um, I also put it in a horse rinse with those three things. So I'll put Epsom salt in a bucket, put the drops of the oil in that bucket. I'll actually show you how to do that at the end. And then fill it up with water and sponge it over my horse. And it's a great oil for any kind of massage that you're doing with your horse. So the way that I like to layer this is I will put a drop in my hands and then rub it in directly on my horses. I like to do hocks, stifles, knees, um, right on his joints, right? So I'll rub it in and then I'll rub it in for 30 seconds, really get that in there. Then I'll do the copaiba, same thing, a drop on each, and rub it in for 30 seconds. And then I'll do the peppermint and rub that in for 30 seconds. And then after, I will take a carrier oil and just kind of like help the carrier oil seal all of that goodness in. And I can, I'll do that on myself too. And um, it's a really, really good way to support your horse's joints and muscles naturally without all the, you know, other ways um, that are a lot more intrusive for them. And, and this is a great natural way to keep your horse feeling good. So, and yourself too. Um, Panaway is a great one. Um, just to have on hand for everybody. If you're, you know, for growing pains or anything like that from, for your, for your whole family. So actually all of these are great to have on hand for your whole family. I use them all constantly. <laughs> okay. So, um, we did the layering technique. Lemon is the next essential oil and lemon is, you know, Lemon water, right? I love lemon in my water. I'll always put lemon drops in my water. And the reason I like to do that is because it's really flushing. It flushes all those yucky stuff. It helps my system get rid of all the junk that's in it from what I'm eating to the environment, um, to the water I'm drinking, right? <laughs> Hopefully I'm not drinking really gucky water, but it really flushes all that yucky stuff out of your system and, and, and just supports your body while your body's flushing that out of its system. Lemon's also a great one for digestion. And so what I do, I like to rotate and my horses feed um, between lemon and two other blends that will go on because I really, I feel like horses are exposed to a lot of yucky stuff. Like if you just soak your horse's hay and you look at the water that it's been soaked in, it's like you can't even see through it. So brown with whatever is on the haze. I'm sure it's a lot of dust, but it's a lot of other stuff. So I like the lemon for flushing my horse's system and just helping my horse support, you know, um, the elimination of all that guck. Um, another thing that lemon is great for is cleaning. And this is um, lemon vitality, by the way, that they can take uh, internally. So lemon, any, if your horse ever gets into anything gucky or you have anything that you can't really sticky get off your horse, lemon is a great one for that. But just um, with citrus oils, they are photosensitive. So if your horse is gonna be out in the sun, 
don't put lemon like right on them and then send them out to the sun because it's photosensitive to the sun. So if I'm gonna put lemon on my horse before they go out in the sun, I'm gonna do it somewhere where the sun doesn't shine, like you know, on their belly for digestive support with a carrier oil in their abdomen, something like that under their throat, you know, where the sun's not gonna get to it. So, um, and then, oh, here's frankincense. I'm sure a lot of you have heard about frankincense because it's been, it is one of the oldest essential oils. It's been used for thousands and thousands of years. Um, it was a holy, holy anointing oil in the Middle East. It was one of Christ's gifts in the Bible. And in ancient, I think China, yeah, um, they used it, an, yeah, anciently the Chinese used it to support overall health and wellness. So frankincense has been around for thousands, actually essential oils have been around for thousands of years, but this is, this was, and is still one of the most amazing in my opinion. Um, it's great for skin. So again, um, and my horse's itchy skin spray, frankincense goes in that with the lavender and the copaiba. That's my mix right there. Um, I love that for scratchy skin or anything that's just not that's irritated. Um, it's also just pointer for you guys for youthful looking skin. If you want to really, um, I don't want fine lines and wrinkles, right? So I make sure this is always in my moisturizer, frankincense. Um, frankincense is also amazing for stress and focus. So this is always in my horse show kit. If you're showing horses or your horse is just exposed to anything stressful, whether it be a new trail ride or anything, frankincense is always one of those really grounding oils. It's a very spiritual grounding oil for us and our horses. So I always say if your horse is in a stressful situation and you're needing to use an essential oils to help support them, right? You're probably going to want to put them on yourselves too, because you want, your horse is going to feed off of your energy and you want that calm focus, right? So frankincense is amazing for that. Again, on the pole. Um, some other places I like to put it is I like to go under the chin too, but on the pole is a really great one. The ears, uh, like around the ears on the pole right here. Um, I like the chest a lot. Um, I even put oils in between my horse's legs, just to, um, in between their front legs, just to encourage them to just drop their head and relax and just sniff those oils and relax. So that's one of my things that I really like, places that I really like to put essential oils, especially the calming ones. So that's frankincense. And then we have Dijai's. Um, this is probably the number one oil that I recommend to people for horses because I've seen so many horses with stressed tummies. We all know the statistics of show horses and horses kept in box stalls and their stomachs and the stress that it does to that, right? And we know what happens when our horses stop eating or they don't feel good. It's really, it can get scary. So Digize is an oil that I always love to have on hand to support their digestive system daily. I like to use this. I actually rotate one week Digize and then I'll do um, another oil and come back to it because my horse um, is doing really good, right? But if I had a horse that was, if he was showing all the time right now, this would be always in the trailer. <laughs> so have you guys ever, I'm sure if you're a horse person, when you haul a horse, you get to your destination, right? You open up that trailer and what does it smell like? And then you look at that poop soup in the trailer. It is gross. The reason it's gross is because your horse was under so much stress and their digestive system got was under that stress while they were in that trailer because it, it, it's all, your whole body is connected and so is theirs. So Digize, I always give before I trailer a horse and always give to horses competing or traveling. Um, it's an amazing one for, you know, any stressful situation showing, um, if your horse isn't feeling right, like this is a great oil. Um, the next oil is Raven. Okay. So we talked about breathing in the diffuser and having the diffuser in the, um, in your horse's stall, right? This is my choice oil for that Raven. It's a blend of five different oils and it's great for respiratory support. So you can either, you know, cup it in your hand and have your horse inhale it out of the, your hands, 
Um, you can diffuse it. And I also talked about putting oils on the chest and in between the legs. This is my favorite oil to put on their chest and between their legs because it encourages all of that clearing and that, that support for the respiratory system. You want their head to come down and just kind of flush everything, clear everything and, and support their breathing. And this is my choice oil for that. And you know, we've all had hard rides and you see your horse and their nose is like, I don't want that. Like I, I want to help my horse in any way that I can. So if I know I'm going to do a hard ride, I put this on before the ride. Um, another thing that I use is I'm in Southern California where the fires have impacted um, a lot of the stables here and we've had to evacuate. And this is the oil that I use on my horse in all of those situations and that I help other people use on their horses um, that are when they're concerned about all of the stuff that's in the air and what they're breathing. And even if the fire is not super close, if you can smell it, so can they, you know? So this is a great oil for that. Um, Citrus Fresh is, um, it smells amazing. It's great for just in your home for great smells. But for your horse, it's good for skin support, but again, it's photosensitive because it is citrus. Um, but another way that it's really used for horses that I think is less known is it can be really balancing and calming and relaxing and promote focus for yourself and your horse. So j just like the lavender, like horses actually, they will tell you what oils they want. And if you want, you can send me an email and I'll send you a video on having a horse select their own calming oil, support at easilyessential.com. You can send me that video because I always, just because lavender works for one horse for, you know, one situation, it doesn't mean it's going to work for every single situation on every single horse. Some horses are going to prefer citrus fresh and some horses are going to prefer stress away and some are going to prefer frankincense, just like people, you know, we all have things that work better for us and our bodies are all different. So citrus is, uh, fresh is a great oil for that, but it's also great for, you know, cleaning, cleaning and, you know, any kind of funk, skin funk, hoof funk. Oh, I forgot that with um, the lemon, hoof funk. It's really good for any kind of like yucky, stinky stuff in the hoof. Um, and so is the citrus fresh. Oh, I just mentioned this oil, Stress Away. Well, it just kind of says it on the bottle, Stress Away. This is uh, one of my favorite oils. I'm actually going to smell it right now because I'm doing this video and I'm not 100% comfortable with it. Um, it. It has, it's a blend of a bunch of different oils and it just smells, it's seven oils. It smells amazing. It's super calming. Um, a, it's a very much by a lot of horses. This is a, an oil that you want to have in those stressful situations, right? You can also have it for yourself. Like it doesn't, people think calming oils mean they're going to put you to sleep. They're not. They're just focusing oils. They're, they calm the mind. They calm the body and they help you focus. And yes, can they support sleep? Of course they can, which that's why I have a diffuser running in my room all night. But, um, uh, stress away is something I use right away in the morning and it's a great oil for your horse. You can use it topically and aromatically. Um, it's not a vitality oil, so it's not for internal use. Um, and then, oh, we have Thieves. Thieves is one of the most popular oils there ever was, I think. It's a blend. And this is my favorite oil for supporting my horse's immune system. So if you have a horse that is dealing with anything, like um, my horse, you know, cut his leg up or whatever, I want to support his immune system and I want to help him heal his own body because our bodies are amazing and so are theirs and they do have the power to heal themselves. But I want to do everything I can to support that healing and, you know, help them heal themselves. And Thieves, this is a Vitality Oil, you can put it right in your horse's grain. And this is the one that I rotate with the dye dries a lot. Um, is an amazing horse for, uh, <laughs> An amazing, maybe I'll name a horse thief someday. An amazing oil for supporting your horse's immune system. Um, it is, oh, I don't even have it. Well, I'm just going to say it. it's great for supporting your horse's immune system, but it's also great for any kind of funk on your horse. Like, I'm not talking about itchy, scratchy skin. I'm talking about funky skin. 
Thieves is a great oil for that. Also funky, stinky feet. Um, another great oil for that or just cleaning. Um, if your horse has any kind of, you know, um, anything that you would need to clean on their body, I dilute this and use that. Another thing we actually have is I, I have a cleaner, a Thieves cleaner, which is Thieves and a cleaning bottle of all plants. Basically everything in this is plants and I use that on feet where the funk just won't go away no matter what you've bought at the feed store, this will work. Um, so the Thieves is, I think it's, it's one of the most high selling, I think it is the most popular essential oil um, that we sell the most of. Um, but anyways, so we've talked about all these oils and we've talked about um, how they can be used practically on your barn, like practical applications that take two minutes or less, right? Um, they will support your horse's digestion, their skin, their skeletal system, muscular, respiratory circulation, the endocrine system, hormones, stress, everything on you and your horse actually. Um, but it seems maybe like, you know, you wanna see how, to, how it's done. So I actually have something here that I can show you just how I make um, a horse rinse. And I'm gonna make a horse rinse, but I'm gonna make it for myself. Because I actually went for, not I didn't go for a run. I have a new puppy and I was teaching him how to heal and I was jogging a little up a hill but I was wearing flip flops and I did something to my ankle where now it's super puffy. I have it in a brace and it's not feeling good at all. It's like I have it elevated on ice all day. <laughs> and so I'm gonna make my horse rinse for myself and after I'm done with this video, I'm gonna stick my foot in this horse bucket. It'll work. Okay, so the way, way I'm gonna do it is I would take a half a cup, but I couldn't find a half cup measuring cup, so I'm gonna use a full cup, but I'm just gonna fill it up half. And this is Epsom salt that I have. Um, Epsom salt is really, really great for uh, your horse and yourself. Again, if you want like to know more benefits of things like that, you can just email me, support at easilyessential.com, or you can send me a message. Okay, so I have a half a cup. And then I'm going to take, I'll take pan away, right? We talked about that for muscles and um, joint support. Okay, I'm gonna put two drops, one, two, in the um, bucket. Three actually, one in there. One got away from me because I was looking at the camera. Um, peppermint, right? It's the Vitality Oil, but I'm gonna use it for topical use because um, it's exactly the same oil in our Vitality bottles as in our um, regular bottles. One, two. Um, and then Copaiba, that magnifier that's also awesome for um, muscles and, and joints and tendons. These are brand new bottles, so I'm having to break the seal on them. I'm gonna do two drops of that. One, two. Okay. So I got two drops of each of those. This is a really complicated device. And then I put it in the Epsom salt because the Epsom salt, it will bind to the Epsom salt so that it doesn't sit on top of the water when I add the water. And then I have water. I hope I don't spill on myself. smells so good, it's clearing out my sinuses <laughs> from the um, peppermint. Peppermint's also really um, clearing for, um, for yourself if you're bogged down in the head. So I'm gonna let that sit, and when I'm done with this video, I'm literally gonna just stick my foot in that bucket. Um, okay, so we have that. And then if you, so obviously we've had this whole kit of these 11 oils bundled together it's actually 50% off retail. You cannot get a better deal even at like, like the discount supermarket. Um, we have it bundled together, but if you like, I'd love to send you a video. Not a video, sorry, we're doing the video here. I have an ebook, a free ebook. If you like a copy of that ebook, there's 12 recipes for horses in the ebook. Really similar to that bucket recipe that I did now. They're all recipes that are gonna take you 
under five minutes to make 12 of them. So just send me an email or send me a message here through Facebook, support at easilyessential.com, and I'd love to send you that ebook. Um, also, if you'd like a, a consultation, like a private individual consulta consultation about using essential oils for your horse's specific needs, um, I'm gonna put a link in the, um, in the description below to um, schedule a consultation with me. So you guys can, we can talk on the phone, talk about your individual needs, and kind of come up with a, a plan and a program as to what would work best for you. Um, so we can do that. And then if you're just like, I'm ready, like I want these oils, I wanna start using them, um, you know, stop talking lady, I'll put a link to, so that you guys can just get started right now. Some of the awesome benefits to getting started is not only the purity of these oils, which um, obviously I like, I take so much pride in that, um, but also the support. So we have um, a horses only education group on Facebook for all of our customers. And we also have a people like human one for your, your kids and yourself and a pets one. And you're gonna be able to go in there and find the answers to anything that you need and then obviously, I'm here to help you and it may be somebody else sent you this video and you know and and they've recommended you like that's fine talk to them about it I'm sure they'll have tons of support for you too but I will put a link for um, to the email you can email me or message me for that ebook and um, and also to uh, do a consultation with me okay and I hope you guys have learned something new thank you so much for watching Bye.